Good morning, boys and girls. The story that we're going to read today is called Four Famished Foxes and Fosdyke. It's written by Pamela Duncan Edwards and illustrated by Henry Cole. Now, there's a word in the title that might be a little unfamiliar to, to you guys. The word is famished. That might be a new word for some of us. Look at the cover of the book and see from the cover of the book if you can figure out what you think famished means. Look at what the foxes are doing and look at what this fox is doing with his pan right there. So what do you think famished could mean? Famished means very, very hungry. So four famished foxes and Fosdyke. It's about these four very hungry foxes and then here's Fosdyke right here. So I hope you enjoy the story. Once down a foxhole lived a family of fox kits. There was Frank, there was Floyd, there were Freddy and Flo. Now the fox kits are the baby foxes. Fosdyke made five. Farewell, cried their fox mom. I'm off for five days in Florida. I feel you can now find food for yourselves. So their mom was off to take a trip, and she's catching a taxi from the Fox Fleet Taxi Service. What fun, cried Frank. We'll filch fowl from the farmyard. We're fierce. We're fearless, agreed Floyd, Fred, and Flo. Frankly, said Fosdyke, I'm rather fond of French food. Liberty giblet, cried Flo. What a fool, added Frank. What a failure to foxhood, the ferocious four cried. Fiddlesticks, said Fosdyke, as he flambéed some fungi. A fox is a fox, whatever the food. So these guys were really excited to go into the farmyard and try to catch fowl, which were probably chickens. But Fosdyke really wanted to cook his French food. So he has out his fry pan and he's flambéing, which is a fancy word for frying up fungi. And in this case, the fungi are mushrooms. So here go the other foxes. Can you see their masks? And one of them even has um, a telescope to look out of. February 4th, 4.15 a.m. The moon shone like a floodlight, as with furtive footsteps they crossed the field toward the farmyard. So they were very quiet and very careful to go across the farmyard because they were looking for, I think, chickens. But, oh, what a fracas face the flabbergasted felons! The fowl were forewarned and began to fight back. Four frantic foxes fled to their foxhole to escape from the fray. So all of these fowl, and it included some ducks and geese too, and the chickens of course, they knew that the foxes were coming. And so they fought back and you can see how they were throwing eggs and it was busting and cracking all over the foxes. So the foxes took off for their foxhole because they didn't want to get pelted with eggs. I'm fainting, gasped Frank. I'm famished, whispered Flo. How did those feather-brained fowl know we were near? Don't tell Fosdyke, fussed Fred, or he'll know we have failed. Fosdyke was frosting a flan of fresh fruit. Fun hunting, he asked. Fantastic, they fibbed. So they didn't want Fosdyke to know that they had gotten hit with the eggs and didn't catch any of the fowl or the birds. But Fosdyke was back making a flan, which is, which is a sweet dessert with fruit on it. And so the other foxes said that they had a fantastic time hunting, but really they were fibbing or telling, telling a little bit of a lie. February 4th, 4.45 a.m. The moon's light forged a path through the ferns to the farmyard. 
cried Frank. Follow me! From the light we'll not flinch! We are four fearsome foxes! Those fowl are just finks! So there they are. You can see their tails in the air. They're going to try again. And so they're going. Frank is their leader this time. And he says, we're not going to be afraid. We're not going to flinch. And we're going to be fearsome foxes. But Fergus, the foxhound, soon finished their flim flam as four foxtails lost fangfuls of fur. Flee, barked Fred to, to his frightened family. They flew from the farmyard, farmyard as fast as they could. So here was Fergus, the foxhound. He was waiting on them. And as soon as they got over, he, he, he started to growl and to bark at them, and they all fled to go back to their foxholes. I'm fainting, gasped Frank. I'm famished, whispered Flo. How did those feather-brained fowl know we were near? Don't tell Fosdyke, fussed Fred, or he'll know we have failed. Fosdyke was flavoring fritters with a dressing of fiddleheads. Fun hunting, he asked. Fantastic, they fibbed. The four little foxes were flustered and fretful, said Fosdyke. I'll make some french fries for you. Fathead, screamed Flo. We're foxes, flesh eaters. We don't eat french fries. I do, flipped Fosdyke, and also French toast. So again, they didn't want Fosdyke to know that they had failed. And so Fosdyke offered to make them some french fries and french toast, but they called him a name instead. But yeah, the four foxes were still hungry, and Fosdyke was eating quite well. February 4th, 5.15 a.m. Fingers of moonlight fell on the foxes as they flitted once more toward the farmyard. So here they are. You can see their tails are even more torn up. Some of them have bandages. Some of them are missing tufts of fur. Oh, they're having a hard time. Suddenly, up flashed the figure of the furious farmer. Friends, he fumed with a fierce frown. And look, you can see his big farmer boots right there. Frank flinched. Fred floundered. Flo fell flat on her face. In a frantic frenzy, the four of them fled. They didn't even get close to the fowl because the farmer was there. Fosdyke was frying a pan of fresh figs. Fun hunting, he asked, flinging on fennel to taste. We're famished, they howled. We're fed up, they cried. We're finished with farmyards. We've got to find food. Fabulous, said Fosdyke, for I've made quite a feast. So it looks like they're all battered and torn up and they're ready to give up. So do you think they're finally going to eat some of the food that Fosdyke is fixing? I hope so, because those foxes sure are famished. Now the figs that he has in his pot right here, figs are a little sweet fruit, and they grow on a tree, and um, you can chop them up, you can eat them like that, or you can cook the figs. Some people like to cook them to make pies and such. First class food, said Frank. All my favorites, fawned Floyd. What fascinating flavors, cried Freddie and Flo. But, fretted Frank, we're still failures and fakes. How did those flapdoodles figure out we were near? Said Fosdyke, I feel I must tell you. It's foolish to forward forage when there's a full moon. Oh, so there was a full moon. In a flash, the foxes faced up to their folly. Why, funny old Fosdyke, the four of them cried, how foxy of you to fathom that out. Furthermore, said Fosdyke, tomorrow's going to be foggy. I fancy you'll find that 
that's a fine time to set forth. But in case fate's against you, I'll be fixing a fondue, and I'll make it a feast big enough to feed five. And so what Fosdyke had told them was that because there was a full moon, the other animals could probably see them coming. But with it being foggy the next night, it would be a lot harder for them to see. So maybe they will be more successful. And you can see them thinking and dreaming about going and catching some fowl from the farmyard. February 5th, 5.15 a.m., for a fox is a fox, whatever the food. And so here's the fondue pot, which is a cheese dipping sauce, where it looks like they're dipping bread into it, that they're eating that. But I don't see that they're eating any of the farmyard fowl. So thank goodness Fosdyke was there to help cook for them, or else those foxes would still be famished. Boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed the story. Did you notice how many F's were in that story? And I think we figured out that famished really meant that they were very, very hungry. So I love you, boys and girls, and have a great day.